Now I will talk about the distinction between the, a grace and a law of God. Aha, anasumuzia kuhusu utofauti kati ya neema na upendo wa Mungu. Now we all know that we are under the grace of God and not under the law. Aha, najua kwamba sisi wote tuko chini ya neema ya Mungu na pia chini ya upendo. We are saved by grace through faith. Tuna tumeokoka kupitia katika neema katika imani and God continue to have a positive view on us. Na Mungu anaendelea kuwa na mawazo mazuri kwetu. God continues to motivate us with his love. Mungu anaendelea kutuchangamsha na upendo wake. And at the same time, you know, we should follow the law, obey the law. Na katika hiyo hali pia tunastahili pia kumtii Mungu. That we should not sin and think it's nothing. Na yaani atustahili kutona dhambi na tuone ni si kitu. But I want to uh, uh, talk about this situation that many Christians or even pastors live under the law. The law. Anataka kusumumuzia mambo ama maswani mengi jinsi ya kuishi chini ya mungu. Now, what do I mean when they live under the law? Ni anamanisa nina natupo sema kwamba tunaishi chini ya mungu. Thinking like this or living under the law. Thinkings like this. Mawazo kama hawa kwamba tunaishi chini ya mungu. For instance, they say, I'm not doing well enough. Ya kwamba nasema kwamba sifanyi mazuri. God doesn't like me. Aha, watu wa nipendi. God will not bless me. Mungu ata nibariki. I'm afraid of God. Mimi na muogopa mungu. And I have to do this, I have to do that. Na staile kufanya hii, na staile kufanya hii. And then when, when people preach, sometimes they say, you have to do this, you have to repent. Now it's true that every Christian should repent. But many people approach it in a, in a way, perspective of the law. Okay, let me compare, like for instance, Someone teaching his child. Ah, ana, ana linganisha mafunzo saba. And the person says, you don't obey me, you're no good. You, I don't like you, I don't love you. Ah, we, mtu anasema kwa ba, hauni yeshimu, hauni pendi, hauni ufanyi pamoja na mimi. You are no good. We, we, si mzuri. You cannot, you know, do anything great. Uneza fanya kitu. You are useless, you are foolish. We, we, ni pusi ngombe imo. Now that is approaching <laughs> teaching this child from with the law. Thank you. With the law only. So If Christianity is just a law without grace, it will be like this. You have to do this, you have to do that. Yakoba unapubiri katika sheria peke yake bila nehema wewe ni mkusitiza lazima utubu lazima ufanye eh oyibiranga abantu. Now the Bible tells us that we are motivated by the love of God to obey Him. Uh -huh. Now what is the difference when we teach a child? What is the difference when we teach a child? We'll say, well, God loves you. You are important. God has a wonderful plan in your life. You are precious in God's eyes and my eyes. I treasure you. Do you believe you can become a great person? And then if you do you want to be a great person? If you want to be a great person, what can you, what should you do? I'm giving him the potential. He knows that his life is precious. I don't make him lose hope. I'm giving him hope all the time. Now some people said Jesus also, you know, scolded the Pharisees. So they say, I want to talk like Jesus to the Pharisees. But you notice that it's only the Pharisees that Jesus talked like that. Because the Pharisees were proud and they think they were right. 
surprised. Yeah. But, when when he, he, but when he talked to his disciples, even when uh, you know he said to the disciples, you know, you, you have little faith. Close this door. Close this door. This door. Okay. Then you have little faith. Jesus said, you have little faith. But he did not just stop there. But he said, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you can move the mountain. So that is grace. Now you have little faith. But God has given you the power. You just have a little faith in God. God will give you strength to do great things. Now when Peter was about to deny Jesus. Jesus said to Peter. I have prayed for you that you will not lose your faith. And then when you read. Turn back, strengthen your brothers. Jesus did not say to Peter, You follow me three years, and now you're going to deny me. What use do you have? How can you bless the church? What I want to say is, when Jesus talked to people, he always gave people hope. Even when we cry out to Jerusalem, when he cried out to Jerusalem, 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 you have always killed the prophets that have been sent to you. Uh -huh. I want to gather you like a hen, <coughs> gather the chicks. You are you not willing. As you are not willing. Now, now, in this saying, Jesus was saying, You have rejected the prophets and killed the prophets. But I still want to gather you like a hen, gather the chicks. So Jesus still gives them hope. Jesus did not say to Jerusalem, You have no more hope. I'm going to punish you forever. But Jesus always gives hope. Except for people who don't repent, then they are proud. And Jesus gives them heavy warning. But even with this warning, that Jesus still gives them hope if they repent, they can still be blessed by God. Can you tell the difference if you read through the Gospels and the, you know, the Bible, even the Old Testament, you can see the grace of God. You can see God warning the Israelites or saying, I punish you. But very soon God will say, you know, Come back to me and you have life. <laughs> so God always gives them hope. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 1 Isaiah Moja is the heaviest chapter on sins. It's very heavy on the punishment of sins. Isaiah Moja ni but in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 Isaiah 1 verse 18 
And then he said, you know, though your sins is like crimson, it will be white as snow. So God immediately tell them, even though your, your sin is so heavy, when you repent, I will wash your sins clean. Now, so, now, let me tell you the lifestyle of under the law and under grace. Now, the lifestyle under the law will be like this. Maisha katika sheria ni kama hivi. Mwangalie vizuri anakufundisha. Oh, my church cannot grow. Sasa unaanza kujilia. Oh, kanisa langu haliwezi kuwa. Ministry is so difficult. Huduma sasa ni ngumu. I lose strength. Napoteza nguvu. And I did not do well. Hata sikufanya vizuri. I, I, so we look at faults and problems and then always say it's difficult, difficult. Umeangalia katika majukumu na matatizo unaona kwamba kweli huduma umekuwa ngumu. Bakamishi kwa wala mbio. But you notice when Jesus encouraged the people to trust in God, wakati Yesu anapoimiza watu wa mtumaini katika Mungu, he said look at the sparrows, God will provide for the sparrows. He, angalia, katika hizo ndege, Mungu ana, si Mungu ni anapatia ndege chakula, zina limanga wa? Or the flowers on the field that God has adorned the flowers. Uh -huh. So you are more precious than the sparrows. So Jesus motivated people to trust God by telling, by telling the people that God cares about the sparrow and cares about you. Aha, wewe kama huduma unastahili kupatia watu tumaini kuambia kwamba Mungu anawapenda nyinyi kuliko jinsi anavyopenda wale ndege. So it's always the grace of God to encourage people to trust in God. Kuna neema ya Mungu ya kuja kuwapea watu tumaini kumfuata Kristo. Now, many people tell people, you have to pray, you have to read the Bible, you have to obey. Watu wengi mnaambia kwa watu wenza, lazima uombe, lazima usome Biblia, wewe lazima uombe, lazima According to the Bible, this is how we encourage people. God has many blessings ready for you. When you meditate on the word of God day and night, you'll be like a tree planted by the riverside. And then you bear fruit and the leaves will not be dried out. So God encouraged people to read the Bible and meditate on the Bible by saying, God has a lot of grace planned for you. Aha, Mungu anaimiza watu wampende Mungu kusoma Biblia na kusema kwamba Mungu ako na upendo na neema nyingi kwetu. So I encourage people to read the Bible or pray, I would do it like this. Aha, kuimiza watu wasome Biblia na waombe, nitawaimiza hivi. God has a lot of blessings planned for you. When, when you pray to him, he's very happy. He's happy to strengthen you and bless you. And God has many promises in the Bible. When you read the Bible and hold on to the promises, you'll be strengthened. You will not be weak. And then for pastors who serve a lot and then no result, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. Maandiko nasema kwenye wakorinzo wa kwanza, nene mstani wa mpili. Tell First Corinthians 4 2. There it says that what is required of a steward is that he is faithful. Many, many pastors say, Oh, I I'm not talented enough. I don't preach well enough. So I don't have good results. Then he will give a lot of pressure to himself. Pressure. Yeah. Okay. Now, now for me, when I first started ministry, I was criticized by a co-worker. 
Hey, wakati alipoanza huduma ali alikadiriwa na mtafanya kazi mwenzake about the result of the ministry na kulingana na matokeo ya huduma and i feel a lot of pressure akaona kuna uzito mwingi that is she was applying the law on me alikuwa anatumia sheria kwake but when i read first corinthians chapter 4 verse 2 wakati aliposoma wa korinto wa kwanza 4 mstari wa 2 it says that when i'm faithful akasema kwamba ninapokuwa mwaminifu god is happy mungu anakuwa na furaha of course i want to do better but I don't have to look at all things I didn't do well enough. I have really tried my best to serve God. I can say God is happy with me. So I can serve God with peace and relaxation. So I found that when I serve God with peace and relaxation, I have better result. And if I look at people, you're not good, you're not good, you're not serving God, then I would have a lot of pressure. And when people don't have that pressure for me, they feel pressure for me. Wakati watu wana wanaona damana. It's hard for them to have strength. It's hard for them to have strength. They always think of going to church is pressure. Now let me ask you, when you think of ministry, do you think of, oh, I have to do this, I have to do that. The church has to grow. <laughs> or do you think God is happy to help me? This is God's ministry. It's not my ministry. I'm just used by God. Anything I do. God is very happy. So I can serve God with joy. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. Oh Jesus. God is happy with me. So I smile more when I preach. I'm more joyful. People see more the grace of God in me. Instead of seeing, you're not good. You're not good. What you guys? Do you see the difference between living under the grace and serving under grace and living and serving under the law? Now when I have the grace, it doesn't mean I don't obey the law. Now some people say you talk about the love of God too much, then people don't, don't obey God. I also teach the law. And I teach about the holiness of God. So I said, I say, God's holiness is beautiful. When one day we go to heaven, there might be someone who doesn't like you on earth. And when you see the person, the person sees you, the person will not say, I don't like him. He's he will be happy. What? Be happy. happy to see you. Yeah, happy to see you. And you say, what? You don't remember anything on earth now? All these bad things between us? Because in heaven is all holiness. No more despise. No more unforgiveness. So God's holiness is beautiful. 
Now even when I talk about the holiness of God, I talk in a very peaceful, joyful way. Now you think of the family. If there is no yelling, uh-huh. there is no yelling, if there is no yelling, and then it's always peaceful and full of love. And it's like in heaven, every day is joyful. Isn't that beautiful? Yo, she, she, she beautiful. Yo, she, yo, she, that is God's, you know, how beautiful is His holiness. So when I talk about the holiness of God, it makes people like the holiness of God. And want to live in the holiness of God. That I'm teaching holiness with grace. But some people may teach holiness, holiness like this. You are all sinners, you have to repent. You are not pleasing to God. You have to kneel down and pray to God. Now, I will encourage people to repent too. I will encourage people to repent too. But I will say like this. God loves you. God cares about you. And God has all kinds of blessings for you. When we sin, it will destroy the relationship with God. And you suffer for your whole lifetime. And when we come to God for repentance, God is very happy. The Bible says the whole heaven is happy. So repentance is beautiful. So kutubu kuna pendeza. Do you want to come to God and say, I'm really sorry for my sins? Now, have you understood now how when I talk about the love of God or the law of God, I teach it in a way full of grace. Now, even if someone is committing adultery, I would talk to them like this. Do you know your life is very precious? Your life can go higher and higher. And and you can do great things for God. But what you are doing now, you are dumping your, your life on earth, you are stamping on your life and destroying your life. Do you want to do that to your life? Do you think your life is precious? Do you think the sexual pressure is so great that you give up God's love? Do you want to come to God in repentance? Hey, Mungu and God is very happy. Mungu Even though we have a period of counseling for you, it's to help you live in the love of God and the law of God so your life will be blessed. Okay, now can you see the difference between this and also how we treat ourselves? How we treat ourselves. Many people have this natural tendency to blame themselves with the law. Very natural for us even now, you might say, I'm not good enough. God is not very happy with me. I don't have good results in my ministry. The other pastor is better. The other pastor is better than me. Pastor, we can get them zuri kuni niko. That we can. It's very easy for us to apply the law to ourselves. Ni sisi wenye upia ni raisi kuweka sheria kwetu sisi wenye. And I tell people. Onambia watu. It's easy to please God. 
ni rahisi kumpendeza Mungu. Some people say no, it's not easy, it's very hard. Mungu anasema sio rahisi ni ngumu. I tell them why is easy. Namwambia ni rahisi. When you when we say we just repent and God is very happy. Wakati tunapookoka tunatubu na Mungu anafurahia. When we don't know how to come close to God, we just say God please help me. I don't know how to come close to you. Please help me. And God is very happy. Kama hujui kusonga karibu na Mungu, wewe ni kusema tu Mungu nisaidie, Mungu nisaidie nisonge karibu na wewe na Mungu anafurahia. And any time we say God I want to do things that please you. God is very happy. Wakati tunaposema kwamba Mungu anataka kufanya vitu ambavyo vinakupendeza, Mungu anafurahia. So What I tell people, a cup of cold water you give to someone, God is very happy. Kikombe tu cha maji ambacho unapea mwenzako Mungu anafurahia. And if you do, do more than a cup of cold water, God is even more happier. Ukifanya vikubwa zaidi kupeana vitu vikubwa kuliko kikombe cha maji Mungu anafurahia zaidi. So we know that it's easy to please God if we have the right attitude. Aha. Tunajua kwamba ni ni rahisi kumtukwa kumpendeza Mungu kama tutakuwa na mawazo ambayo ni makamilifu mbele zake. When we just repent and love God and obey God, God is very happy. Ni kutubu tu na kumtii Mungu na kumpenda Mungu, Mungu anafurahia. So God is happy with me now because I want to please him. Ha, Mungu anafurahia na mimi kwa sababu nataka kumpendeza. Even though I don't I'm not doing very well, it's okay. God is still happy with me. Hata kama sifanyi vizuri, sitoi matokeo mazuri, bado tu Mungu anafurahishwa na mimi. Now let me ask you, is it easy to have this mentality? Ni rahisi kuwa na mawazo kama hayo? But let me tell you, when you go home, it's very easy to lose it. Ha, anasema anakwambia kwamba wakati unapokwenda nyumbani itakuwa ni rahisi. Because the people around you is always saying you're not good enough, you're not doing well. Kwa sababu watu ambao wako karibu na wewe wanasema wewe si mzuri, wewe ufanyi vizuri, wewe upendezi. Because most people live under the law. Kwa sababu watu wengi wanaishi chini ya sheria. So I hope when you go home you bring more grace to your home and to your church. Anasema kwamba unapoenda nyumbani uombe neema mingi kwa ma, kwa, kwa boma lako na kwa kanisa lako. So they know that God always loves me. So najua kwa Mungu ananipenda. And God is a great plan for me. Mungu ako na mpango mkuu katika maisha. Anything I do for God God is very happy. Chochote ambacho nakifanya kwa Mungu Mungu anafurahia. And God will reward me. Mungu atani zawadi. That way everyone is more relaxed. Aha. Everyone is more relaxed. Kila mtu atakuwa <coughs> Alabama relax. <laughs> Amen. Kila mtu atakuwa na utulivu. But I have noticed many people they whatever they say is full of the law. Wa wamegundua kwamba kila kitu ambacho watu wananena kimejaa na sheria. And they think that that is holy. <coughs> That's holiness. Wanafikiria kwamba kunena katika sheria ni utakatifu. They will say something like this. Wanatasema hivi. These people live in darkness. How do they live in darkness? They're controlled by Satan. When they go to the Satan, God doesn't like them. Mungu apeli yao. They have no hope. Awa na tumaini. And what they do for when they serve God, God doesn't like it. E e kitu wakifanya zote Mungu apendezi na. And they think they are very holy when they think like that. They think they are very holy. God's holiness. God's holiness is love God and love people. Utakatifu wa Mungu ni kumpenda Mungu na kupenda watu. And also live in the holiness of God and forsake all sins. Ha, unaishi katika utakatifu wa Mungu na unasahau dhambi zote. Can you tell the person next to you now? God really likes you. God is happy with you. Ambia jirani yako kwamba Mungu anakupenda, Mungu anakupenda. Now let me ask you. Can you, can you remember this teaching? Unaweza kumbuka haya mafunzo? Is it important? Ya kwa maana? It makes you very relaxed, right? Inakufanya umezoea and peaceful and have hope, right? Nikona tumaini people hope. Na unaweza kupata watu tumaini. Please remember this is One of my most important teaching. Tafadhali kumbuka kwamba haya ndio mojawapo ya mafundisho yake ya maana. Uyale ukumbuke. And sometimes it's easy to forget it. Na saa zingine ni rahisi kusahau. Because the people around you always say you're not doing well. Kwa sababu watu ambao wako karibu na wewe watakuwekelea vile haufanyi vizuri wewe ufanyi vizuri wewe ufanyi vizuri. Especially the husband and wife relationship. Aha. Ah katika ile hali ya mwanamke na mwanaume uhusiano wao. 
your wife and your husband may talk to you like this. <laughs> so we want to start giving more love, more grace to a husband or wife. Aha. I appreciate you. Haha, I like what you do for me. I'm so happy to have you. It's my blessing to be married to you. So I hope you talk to your spouse and your family members, your children like that. And your church member like that. Yes. 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 Now I hope you spread this teaching. <laughs> if you go on YouTube, you look for Pastor Yip, you can see my teachings here. Okay, on YouTube. Why on YouTube? I love Pastor Yip. Why on YouTube?